The unique thing about the Clarence is that, as you know, he served in very distinguished capacity as president of Dominica. But he also served in the public sector and now he's in the private sector. And it was very instructive hearing from him about some of the difficulties that the private sector, now, when he put on his private sector hat, is getting in its cooperation, in its relationship with the public sector. And I mean, I am in the public sector, so I'm not trying to put any unnecessary um, criticism on the public sector. But definitely, there is, I think it was agreed that there is a fundamentally different culture which exists in the public sector and in the private sector. And we need to find ways and means of ensuring that that culture is complementary to one another. I mean, both have different roles to play. The private sector is more concerned with the question of profitability, feasibility, viability, and those kind of issues, and justifiably so. Um, one can understand that. And these issues take place on a permanent, on a personal basis, a personal um, and individual firm, the, the, and so on, an industry. And, and therefore, there are certain fundamental differences in the way the public sector operates and the way the private sector operates. The private sector welcomes the formation of such a committee. Purely from the private sector point of view, we are primarily interested in the business of developing for Dominica a worthwhile position in the international trade of goods and services. And that in itself carries some very specific responsibilities. It means that the level of firms in this country, especially insofar as it relates to exports and it relates to our services in the tourism industry and uh, non-tourism services as well, that we're going to have to tailor our operations to meet the very exacting standards that apply in the international community. And uh, we feel that down here, in order to begin to facilitate that process, an environment that is conducive to doing that kind of business has to be created. Our input, therefore, in the Policy Review Committee is going to be focused at that level. We will, we will be trying to bring to the discussion some of the successful strategies for resolving problems that we have used in the private sector. Um, we are aware of a number of outcomes that are not acceptable um, to the public sector and to the private sector and to the nation as a whole. And what we'd like to see, take communication for example, is to really zero in on some of those areas where we can plug the communication gaps. Last week's launching of the Policy Review Committee was attended by representatives of the Caribbean Policy Project and the East Caribbean Economic Management Program. It is expected that these and other agencies will be tapped for the work of the program of the Policy Review Committee. The first meeting of the restructured body will be held in mid-July, where work is expected to begin on the priority areas identified at last week's meeting. Environmental health managers from the Caribbean region met here last week to discuss solid waste management and other matters pertinent to the environment. The week-long meeting, which was held at the Fort Young Hotel, was hosted by the Ministry of Health. It is my hope that this meeting will develop some approaches whereby we may be able to get more from the limited resources which environmental health department must operate with. It appears almost nowadays like a constant appeal since there can be no hope of any magic. We can't expect to get more resources and certainly not from the same sources that we did before. So unless we are able to attract resources from new areas, we must deliver more for the same level of resources given to us. As health, environmental health managers, I think we're duty bound to find the new ways to become more creative so that the work which we've been entrusted with can go on. PAHO has had a special relationship with us in this, and I think the very fact that we are meeting here is testimony of PAHO's continued commitment to provide support. The meeting was supported by the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, and the health section of the Caribbean community, CARICOM. One of the, the activities during this meeting is for us to sit and look at what we have been achieving. Have we achieved anything? In other words, we've moved down the continuum 
from problem definition into the point of evaluation. And it is expected that the outcome of this meeting is going to give us an opportunity to feed back positively, I hope, into reinforcing the process of cooperation and help, which, if you allow me to remind us, was one of the very first areas in which the region had moved uh, towards working together. The CCH initiative allowed us to identify specific priority areas. And one of the first priority areas in our CCH initiative is the area of environmental health and vector control. This is going to provide us with that opportunity of looking at ourselves, both from the perspective of the health uh, ministry itself, because we have here permanent secretaries and CMOs, and of course, the environmental health officers who form just one section within the ministries of health. So it's a, a good opportunity for us to look at intra-collaboration within the Ministry of Health. It is therefore more important that the health sector, and particularly the environmental health sector, be prepared to, to play the role that is necessary if we are to move forward the concept of health not only as a means to development, but as a goal of development. In the current dialogue that is taking place with respect to health, environment, and development, both at the regional level and at the global level, the emphasis continues to be on the green issues. And I suppose because man is not green, it is easy for us to understand why the human element and the human face of this link between health, environment, and development continue sometimes to be left out. It is therefore critical that agencies like my own and countries continue to ensure that this does not happen and that there be ways, in fact, to ensure this. The increasing prominence of tourism in the Caribbean as one of the major contributors to the economies of the Caribbean makes the issue of health and the environment particularly important, if not sensitive at this point. But when we are discussing health and the environment as it relates to tourism, we make the point that what we do want to create is an environment that is, nest, that is appropriate for the healthy lifestyle and the healthy choices of the nationals of the country. And there is no doubt if those standards are achieved that any visitor will want to, to uh, visit the country. In addressing the regional environmental health managers, Health Minister Alan Guy and the Prime Minister Dame Eugenia Charles pointed to areas of concern which needs to be addressed. Throughout the Caribbean region, because of our dependence on agriculture and tourism, government has become increasingly aware of the threats of our fragile ecosystem. Environmental protection, therefore, demands the attention of all governments. Under the Caribbean Cooperation in Health Program, environmental health was accorded the highest priority. Following the declaration, the Caribbean Environment Health Institute was established. The Caribbean Environment and Health Institute has been involved in various projects with respect to industrial waste and effluent, pesticide residue, and environmental information systems. CE has collaborated actively with PAHO and the German Agency for Technical Cooperation in the execution of its program. Environmental health is regarded as a priority, largely because human existence and all forms of human endeavor depend on the environment. In the Caribbean, we have witnessed rapid expansion in tourism. There is also the emergence of industrial waste in areas which threaten various forms of human activity, notably fishing. Health departments with responsible for environmental health must be prepared for the challenges confronting our countries in the areas of solid waste management, environmental pollution, vector control, and food safety. Throughout our sub-region, solid waste management presents serious challenges to all governments. In the case of Dominica, 
A new system of garbage disposal was introduced in 1989. It was the aim of government to provide an efficient manner of storage, collection, and disposal of waste to residents in more densely populated areas. Government also expressed its commitment to the elimination of open dumping practices. There are many um, areas that will be discussed this week, I'm sure. But I think everybody's entitled to have some favorite subjects. And of course, mine is solid waste management. It has exercised my mind for many years. And our minister spoke about this a while ago. And we have not yet succeeded in doing all that we want to do in that line. And the weakness lies in the fact that we have not yet been able to make the individual citizens realize that waste management is not a matter only for officials, the matter for each and every person who lives in the country. Difficult to make them understand that when they collect their garbage in plastic bags, they should not empty them into the bin, but should put them wrapped tightly and closed tightly into the bin as such. They like to save the plastic bags. How do we explain to them that the money spent on them when they are purchased is better spent by letting them go into the waste management bin rather than be saved for further use again? And so the health personnel, the Ministry of Health has a great deal to do regarding environment. But every sector requires to do its part as well. There's the pure business of providing health and the hazards that lie wrong in what we do to ensure the environment is not poisoned by the incidence of ill health. But the ordinary day-to-day -day living of the person impacts perhaps even more greatly on the environment. And what do we do? How do we ensure that each and every person realizes that the protection of the environment is really protection of each individual? These are the things that we have to say over and over again, repeat every day to ensure that persons understand it and therefore take on the task of making sure the environment is a pleasant place for all of us to live in. The formal opening was attended by President of Dominica, His Excellency Crispin Sorrendo, and Speaker of the Dominica Parliament, Honorable Neva Edwards, among others. Meantime, the whole issue of solid waste management was on the agenda of the Prime Minister at a recent meeting with the World Bank in the United States Capitol, Washington, D.C. The World Bank has a big proposal for us, a very costly proposal, and I've told them, if you made it so costly, we can't afford to take part in it. So look again and think again and see how you're going to do it so that we can have what all of us want, but at a cost that all of us can afford. I haven't seen much bending on your part, but they did take the trouble to talk to us at great length to see what we were complaining about. And I said, I'm only complaining about the cost. Where do you think we're going to get $1 million to put a landfill? You know, the garbage disposal alone costs 600000 Where do we get the money from? And when are we going to begin to separate our garbage? When are we going to be able to put away car batteries separately? When are we going to be able to crush cars so we can get rid of all these horrible mosquito bringers that are all on the sides of the road? All of these things cost money. And there's no doubt at all that this country itself can't afford all of that. We have to look for assistance elsewhere. And we have to look, find ways and means of doing it among our islands that will make it more beneficial and less costly for all of us. We had news last week that government is currently working out the logistics for new user fees for the Princess Margaret Hospital. The current fees of $5 a day is outdated and is far from reflecting the true cost of health care. Development economist Eisenhower Douglas said the current data indicates that the true cost of care today is well over $100 a day. Government is looking at the possibility of revising the fees to more reflect current day realities. 
However, no one will be denied hospital care because of the inability to pay. Mr. Douglas said that the hospital user fees may be one of the items on the agenda of the newly launched policy review committee. It may not be costing the patient $150 a day, but it's costing the state about $150 a day. And therefore, the question is, shouldn't persons who use the hospital be paying more? I mean, we have to make the point that the legitimate cases of those persons who cannot afford to pay, they should not be forced to pay. Because hospital services cannot be compared with services, let's say, buying a motor car. You buy a motor car if you can afford to buy a motor car. You buy a radio if you can afford to buy a radio. But you do, you, you entitled as a human being to hospital services. You entitled as a human being to medical services. And therefore, one has to approach the issue of medical services on a much different basis as you approach purchasing a motor car. But you have to approach it nonetheless because it is creating a very, very serious problem. And the question of consensus comes up there again. So these are the kind of issues that we're talking about. The government of Dominica, with the assistance of donor countries, has made significant improvements to the Princess Margaret Hospital, both in infrastructure and equipment and the quality of care provided. Prime Minister Dame Eugenia Charles last week held discussions with the World Bank in the United States capital, Washington, D.C. Dame Eugenia gave happenings and insight into the discussions held. Well, you know, this meeting is held every two years with the Caribbean group, usually ministers of finance and persons in planning. And they do a review of the economic state of the region. Apart from that, we also have individual country meetings. So we had a Dominica meeting with them with all the things that we required to do and we wanted to do, and the help we required from them to do it. Naturally, the banana industry was a major topic. But this year, the meeting was different in that the World Bank invited the private sector. And though they haven't said it in so many words, it is obvious that they realize that governments are unable to give the assistance they used to give before because every government almost is having a difficulty, difficult time financially and economically. And so they invite the private sector, hopefully they can encourage the private sector to do more of the investing themselves. And of course, encouraging us, the governments, to let the private sector take a, a greater part in running the things in the country, something which Dominique has always been anxious to do. But we haven't always found all the members of the private sector ready and willing to take on the burden, though we have some very good members who have shown initiative in moving forward themselves. And they also the NGOs were invited, and you know NGOs consider themselves a government that's a non-elected government that has the interests of the people more at heart than the government itself. But then it's easy to feel that way when you don't have the responsibility of finding the day-to-day -day cash to make the country tick, that you can do things that are extra and sometimes more visible than the day-to-day -day problems that the government has to tackle. However, well, all of these were there and they were in, invited to take part in, it, in, in, in the discussions. Consensus was that we are all of us going through difficult times and that we have to take some strong measures to overcome them. We in Dominica have taken strong measures from the beginning, but we have to continue doing so if we are to succeed in keeping ourselves afloat. The important thing is that the, the World Bank keeps insisting that we must cut expenditure, that we must not continue spending as we are spending if we are to be able to continue to survive, that we are spending more than we should. You know, they've always been at us forgetting forgetting not only they but the persons who help us that we must keep our costs down that we must make sure that they're not too steep rises in expenditure because and we must keep expenditure less than your revenue always so you can have some extra money to yourself invest in the capital projects that we require to keep the country sustained and continue moving forward we have done a lot of these capital projects a lot of it through grant and some of it through loans, but more and more we require concessionary loans, that is low interest loans with long terms of repayment. And we're not, we are not always successful in getting these in these days because they're not as common as they used to be when we first came in. But all of these things were talked about and mentioned strongly there. 
Damien Jr. indicated that the World Bank continues to be interested in assisting with infrastructural development. And I reminded them quite strongly that infrastructure includes the airport, which they have never given um, a good word about. They have always been reticent about the value of, an, of a larger airport for us. And I accused them directly of that. They, they said that they hadn't said, no, you couldn't have the airport, but you couldn't borrow the money to do it. We've always known we can't borrow the money to do it. And I reminded them that what we're looking is for grant money or for investment money in it. And they decided that they did it, say that they would take another look at our proposal to see if there any way they could advise us and help us. They, not, not to get the money for it, they didn't go as pointedly as that, but they were having a re-look at it. But I'm still insisting, and even when I leave government, I'm going to insist that we require a larger airport. At least we require an airport which can be lit and therefore can be used for 24 hours a day. That is the important thing about it. If we could do that for the other airports, perhaps I wouldn't be so um, forceful about trying to get the larger airport. The other um, matter, as they said, they were interested in human resource development. And they did give us good marks for that because we have shown that we are interested in ensuring that people are trained so that they can do the jobs efficiently that they are hired to do. And I mean, for the first time, Dominic, about two, three years ago, actually votes money for human resource development before we depended only on assistance from others. And we saw that assistance was waning because of other countries' own difficulties. We decided we had to put our money in our mouth and make sure that there is more training for our people. Another area which the Prime Minister sought assistance for at her meeting with the World Bank and other donors was the Entrepreneurial Approach to Labour, EAL, a recent initiative of the government of Dominica. But it requires some small amount of money to help and we don't have the money ourselves to do it. And I believe that I haven't got the money in my hand, I didn't come back with it in my purse for instance, but I believe that I sh there was enough interest around that we will get the money to go ahead with it. We already got the money for the training part promised to us, the $50,000, and then we are, we are hoping to get the rest of the money to put it in place so that the young groups, the groups of young, young persons who will be able to sell their time to the farmer will be able to um, have a very, very low interest loans so they can have their own transport, be able to own their own equipment for spraying, for digging holes, for dredging, all of those things which would make it the work more efficient and quicker so that therefore they can earn money from it and the farmer can get a satisfactory service. And these are the things that we're looking at. And I hope, I'm hopeful that we will get this in place before the end of the year. And this is a strong point I made, but a small thing, but I think it's an important matter for Dominica that we get the EAL going. I know that farmers are complaining always that they don't have the skilled labor that they require to help them to be efficient. But we're always telling them about quality, that they must have quality goods, and they require that assistance. So we're working hard at putting it in place so the farmer can know that he will have people who can come and do the work and he can supervise it and make sure his farm is run properly. Because the success of ourselves in agriculture, besides talking as we do of diversification, is the ability to do the work properly, to do the work at a reasonable cost, and to ensure that the farmer has time to look at his, at his own, at what he's doing, and to be able to see what he wants to do. It's difficult now even for the farmer to decide he's going to, to change from one crop to the other, or besides the one crop he has, to increase an acreage in another crop, because he's too busy just doing the little bit of day-to-day affairs. And this is what we want to do, so the farmer can really control his business and be able to look forward to planning what he wants to do with it and not have to do it because there's no, no other choices before him. A local service club has again come to the aid of healthcare services here. Last week, the Kiwanis Club of Roseau presented a much-needed piece of equipment to the Princess Margaret Hospital. We have tried very hard to secure this equipment. Kiwanis International has declared that this year young children should be the number one priority of every Kiwanis club. And it is against this background that we have been working so hard in order to purchase this transducer. 
which is valued at over $10,000 US. We further intend to demonstrate our continued commitment for the advancement of health care in Dominica with further donations to the hospital by way of a peak flow meter, nebulizers, and a very advanced oximeter. In a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, we are striving to build a better community by focusing in part on the health and general well-being of young children. Dr. Vicaro, who was then responsible for the ultrasound services at the PMH, thought that a major weakness in the service using the equipment that we currently had, that is the uh, echocardiogram ultrasound machine, was that that machine was really adapted only for use in adults and that he had great difficulty being able to use it in children and more specifically to assess the cardiac status of children because the transducer was designed mainly for adults. So I think that it is really a very significant advance in the diagnostic services at the Princess Margaret Hospital to now have a pediatric transducer which can be utilized on the present ultrasound machine which is available in the outpatient department which would allow the diagnostic facilities to very effectively address the diagnostic problems related to the pediatric population at this hospital. Health Minister Alan Geig, in his address, pointed out the significance of the piece of equipment to the Princess Margaret Hospital and to Dominican children. It is my understanding that some three years ago, the Kiwanis Club embarked on a project to obtain funding for the purchase of the equipment. It is a small piece of equipment, but its estimated value of US $10,000 suggests that it should greatly support diagnostic capabilities on the pediatric and neonatal wards. I have been informed that the availability of the transducer will reduce the number of overseas referrals for investigations. Our diagnostic capabilities will be greatly enhanced. It is therefore fitting that I should extend sincere thanks to the Kiwanis Club for this fine gesture. It is an act of goodwill which demonstrates the club's concern for the quality of care delivered at the hospital. Mr. Chairman, the transducer will now enable us to perform ultrasound investigations on children. Without the equipment, these ultrasounds were only possible on older patients. I'm further informed that suspicions of certain conditions can be fully investigated, resulting in more precise diagnosis and more accurate treatment. Minister Guy also touched on the proposed new user fees for the Princess Margaret Hospital, which is currently looked at by the government. You will recall that I mentioned earlier that the presentation has special significance. This is because the question is often asked as to whether the hospital should continue to rely on the generosity of our citizens or whether we should institute fees which will enable government to provide for the hospital from fees earned for services delivered. It seems to me that there will always be a place in the hospital to accommodate the kindness and generosity of our citizens. Yet the time has come when users and potential users of the hospital services must contribute in a definite way to the operations and infrastructural expansion of the facilities at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Recently, Government announced that user fees would be increased at a level which more closely reflects the operating cost of hospital services. And we invited citizens to send us feedbacks on these proposals. It is, however, government's intention to ensure 
that all citizens continue to receive services. Therefore, we're examining various ways in which these user fees might be paid. As already indicated by the Prime Minister, those on public assistance and others who do not have the ability to pay will be